Hey, what's up, everybody? So, now I gotta remember where we left off. <laughs> it's always the fun part about coming back after a weekend. Um, oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so we were working on trying to refactor out our pipelines into their own bins, and we had like all kinds of <clears throat> video issues. And I was actually asking around on IRC about that to see whether anybody had some ideas of, of like why would it be different inside of its own bin. And it turns out that uh, they were just as confused as I was. <clears throat> I don't know if we put the source also into its own bin, whether that fixes our issue. But what I'm thinking about doing is maybe just stashing all of that or like maintaining a separate branch where I work on that and then maybe working on some of the other issues that are like are within my ability to solve because I think that's going to require like a lot more research behind the scenes. So let's do that. All right, um, cargo lock. Oh, okay, I just like a cargo update. Okay, that's fine. Um, um, We'll just call this inter source. I don't know. All right. Start of refactor to use inter source slash inter sync elements. Okay. We'll leave that there for now. And uh, so one of the things I I also did <clears throat> was, where's this one issue? This one. So I was asking around an IRC over the weekend about this. Like I, I understood that it was a clock issue, but I wasn't exactly sure where the best place was to put this. So we kind of have this thing where if we start up the pipeline, and then add the source later, we end up with uh, like the video ends up fast forwarding, which we don't want to happen. So there's a way that we can set on the pad an offset. So we can offset the running time of that particular pad by some amount, which we would, we would do the current running time of the pipeline. So let's see if we can get this running first so we can just test it broken um We still need to clean up a lot of the rust code too. Like there's a lot of unwraps and things like that in here that we really need to get rid of. <clears throat> Maybe we'll do that after we fix this issue. We'll just start kind of going through one <clears throat> file at a time and trying to do better error handling. Wait, what's in our main? Uh oh. There we go. Create our mixer. Okay, so we have an input in here, and that's not what we want. 
We do not want an input right now. Um, I guess the output would be fine. Alan. Oh, this is part of the input, so we can just move this up here. Okay, so now we should have this pipeline playing. Where did we send the RTMP output uh, to backup? So that's going to be this one. So this should just give us our black <clears throat> screen. So let's leave this running for just a minute so that we're far enough into the uh, the running time that when we add our input, it sort of makes it fast forward. Okay, let's add our input. Oh, that's gonna 404, there we go. And now we should watch it pop in there and then just like fast forward really fast. In theory. Where are you? Okay. So I think that's that's what we're seeing, right? Well, it's kind of weird that it does that. <clears throat> to play it like a faster frame rate. All right, let's shut it down. And now <clears throat> I just want to test that, you know, if we start up the pipeline and then add it really fast, that it's going to play normally. Come on, go away. Okay. All right, we know, well, we know that's at a minute three, so let's just start this. Okay. Oh, we still do have sort of glitches though. I thought we had this working. I mean, the audio sounds okay, but there's clearly something in the video. Hmm. Let's see if we can open like VLC and see if we can just connect to Okay. Kill this really quick. I don't see the time continuing here. Hmm. 
So we've got the audio here, but no video. All right, so we've got we've got more issues than I thought. Hmm. What if we use this? Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see if we can connect here. Uh, this is under HLS and Stream key dot m three u eight. Okay. So this is playing the same manifest file that we see here. So let's kill this. I mean, it's possible that it's just a VLC thing. Hmm. Yeah, because we know this video is playing. The gatekeepers. Okay, so maybe this is just like a bug in VLC <clears throat> because we know there's video in here, right? Because we can see the same video here in a live running. Okay, so what what is VLC's issue? Okay, uh, I'd really like to see VLC working because I'd like to remove this uh, repackaging. That way we can sort of like send to RTMP as well as just read off of RTMP <clears throat> directly. Hmm. So why would VLC? Let's see. Let's see if we can get something else. Big buck bunny HLS. All right, um, that's one transport stream. I'd really prefer HLS though. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. That'll work. All right. Okay, yeah, so we have, <clears throat> we definitely have audio coming through here. Oh, I take it back. Interesting. So why does... Hey, Bartholomew. Okay. So... This brings up a good question, then. Is this the encoding that it's in? Can we do a GST discover on that? We might need to get an individual. Okay, that's an MPEG-2 transport stream. AAC. Okay, so what is the issue with ours? GST discover. HLS uh, stream key dot M3U8. So, same container format, 
Same audio and video encodings. Oh, we've got a different profile here though. Why are we... Now this is interesting. Okay, so let's let's try and set it. So GST inspect um, <clears> H two sixty four. Wait, X H. Where are you? Output. All right, so here's our encoder. We're setting our key interval, but we're not setting anything for what our profile is, which I find very interesting. But let's see, X264 ink. What are our options? <clears throat> uh, so this is our bit rate. Okay, so it's saying that it defaults to medium. All right, so we need to look at this because we are somehow here, right, instead of here. Presets. Okay, I am... Yeah, that's, that's the question though. Um, we should. Oh, it's not there anymore. Um, we need to run this for a second. <clears throat> it feels like those presets are wrong, though. So we're going to give this a second to play just so we have some data. Sixty frames per second. Where are we? Where are we setting sixty frames per second? Though that's not. That's thirty. Oh wait, what is this under? Ah, we need to bring that in through options yet still. <clears throat> I feel like those defaults are wrong though, right? Why are we using high as our profile? I mean, I don't know that it's gonna make a huge difference. Hmm. I mean, we can change our speed preset. Um, 
let's maybe do very fast. Oops. But there's clearly a difference here because <clears throat> Got G, wait. Expected, oh, uh, okay, so there's some X6, X264 encoder preset type. Okay, let's go find it. Um. X264, ink. Preset. So, what exactly is this type then? Because it's not in the GStreamer library. <laughs> um, hmm. What is the goal of the current exercise to handle an input stream in the switcher and send it elsewhere, but re-encode? <clears throat> right. All right. Do you mean the project as a whole, Bartholomew? Or what I'm, what I'm trying to solve right now? Uh, so right now, the, the main issue that I was first starting to debug was if we start the pipeline playing like so oops Okay, so <clears throat> if we start the pipeline playing right now, the there is a, a running time of the pipeline that is currently incrementing. So if we let this go for a little bit, if we let it even say run for a couple of minutes, what will happen is if we add another input to it, the pipeline will try to catch our input up to the current running time. So you either watch the video not show up or you watch it just speed through really, really fast. <clears throat> so the current thing we're trying to solve for is getting those timelines in sync so that um, we basically apply an offset to our, we, we apply an offset to the runtime of the thing we're adding so that it, it will uh, stay in sync. What is the double syntax name? Right here? Uh, I mean, this is just scope, right? So this is a GST module and inside of that is a caps type. And then on that is a static method called builder. Okay, so we've got this running We'll, get, we'll give it a little longer and then we'll add the video and we should be able to like watch it like fast forward really fast. So yeah, it's, I don't know if there's a name for it, but it's actually serving two purposes right now. One is scoping to a module. The other is because this is a static method on this type. Okay. But yeah, so along the way in trying to do this, just to test this out, Bartholomew, I sort of ran into an issue where <clears throat> there's like a lot of weird jitter and stuff like that in the video. And so I was just trying to see whether I could figure out what that is. Okay, so now we're about two minutes in. Um, let's close this. So if we add this input and we wait, I don't know, 
maybe 10 to 20 seconds because we're, we obviously have some latency, right? Um, we should watch the video come in and then fast forward. Yeah, see how it's almost like on fast forward right now? And, you know, if we waited 10 minutes to add this video to it, it would really fly through there. Uh, so Bartholomew, we, we have to re-encode, we have to because we don't know what the input types are going to be. Right, so Nginx and RTMP is just is just pulling the streams out and then pushing them into a new FLV container. But we can't do that because we, we can be adding additional videos and images and all kinds of things that are going to be in various formats. So we, we have to encode. Right, but we can't copy, is what I'm saying. We can't copy. Because we are going to be layering um, individual inputs of varying uh, encodings. So we have to decode them so that we can rescale them, so that we can uh, layer them on top of each other, things like that. Unfortunately, you know, we're not just like repackaging for HLS. Okay, so... <clears throat> What we should be able to do here, I added a note yes, yesterday. So we should be able to grab the sync pad. So this is on our input. Uh, so URI. Okay, so in here, I think, I guess we're gonna have to apply this to both audio and video. But for now, let's go with video. So here's our sync pad. Um, wait. Yeah, okay. So I just sort of... Okay. So we want to grab the parent element, which we don't really need to do, right? We can just say, hey, video. Get the current running time. If this is the right element, we might need to like get the pipeline or something and ask it for its current running time. And then where is our source pad? running time <clears throat> well so Bartholomew like I totally get there's probably people out there doing similar things and if you can find me that project I mean I'm, I'm happy to look at it but I have spent quite some time trying to figure out how to take things that are similar and customize them Plus, it's, it's a learning experience, too. So I, I think we don't want to discount that and just, like, not build something that we want to learn from. Uh, what stage of development are you in? So this is, like, a... Um, we're currently kind of, like, prototyping things out and trying to understand a bit more about how GStreamer works. So we've got some working kind of proof of concepts where we've got an HTTP API to set up a mixer and and add inputs and outputs sort of on the fly. We've got some bugs, obviously, that we need to work through, but we, we kind of have a, a proof of concept. Uh, yeah, so I can do picture in per picture, which is what I'm doing. Okay, so. Uh, what's our error? Um, expected I-64, found struck clock time. Okay, so that. Can I not convert this?
Hmm. You'd be interested in testing when I get there? Yeah, absolutely. I like I can't wait to see this get a little further. Yeah, yeah, the unknown unknowns are what gets you every time. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. I know may never cease. We have received a new subscriber, sir. Lurk Ops, thanks so much for the sub, man. I really appreciate that. Okay, so I know that I did this before. I was playing with this, so this is a clock time. Uh, I suppose we can go pull up the docks for it, but I thought that set offset was what I wanted here. It is an I-64. Hmm. Okay, so that's not going to work. We've got to figure out how to... Wait a sec. Okay. We've got to figure out how to take this clock time and make it an I-64. Hmm. Alright, let's go check out the GStreamer library and see what we can find. Um... So all of these are clock times, but can we find where it is defined so that we can figure out if we have a way of converting that into... Let's go look up the, the docs for it. <clears throat> Does the struct not implement from trait for I-64 or duration? Yeah, it doesn't appear that way. For some reason, I thought it did. I thought that I had checked to see whether this did, but let's go. Lo let's go look at it. Uh, Great set I O. G streamer. All right, clock time. Okay. Okay, so this is from Um, what's this return? It returns back a clock time, and this is expecting I-64, okay. Okay, so we have into an option U64. That's supposed to be an I64. So, I mean, we could convert it into a U64 and then convert that to an I64. Okay, this is the, that's the created sub. Okay, um. I don't think we can just do a dot into on it. Yeah, I don't think so. Boo.
Uh, how do we want to do this? I think we're going to have to... Where is it? No, that's from. I'm guessing this is dividing it. Hmm. I mean, this is the closest we're going to get, right? <clears throat> Getting an option to a U64. And we should be able to convert the U64 into an I-64, right? Um. I'd love to see an example of this, though. Current running time. Actually, let's uh, set. Let's look for set offset. <clears throat> Generic formatted value time. What is this? Okay, let's look this up. Generic formatted value. <clears throat> so this must have This must have an into, like, implemented. Um, I believe it is in milliseconds. But this appears like the way that they're doing it, right? So they're getting a clock time, but we already have one. So in theory, we should be able to just use this same logic. What is set offset end? Okay, let's well let's try this. This was generic. Wait, what package was this in? Format generic formatted value. Okay. Format generic. Oh wait, we need GST format um generic well no we don't i mean generic formatted value time nope uh variant not found in gst What am I missing? Generic format? All right. Use generic formatted. Oh, it's something. Wait, where is it getting this from? What crate did that come in? There is an M seconds function in clock time struck, but it's U64, so might crash if it's... Yeah, so, yeah, I'm worried about overflow, and I'm also concerned that I don't know what that means. Like, is that the total number of milliseconds that the clock represents, or does it represent, like, a subset, like, hours, minutes, seconds, and combine they equal the total 
So we would need to figure that part out too. Okay, so... G-Streamer, format, what am I missing? So, that is in there. G-Streamer as GST, okay. So, GST, GST, format, uh-huh. Oh, there isn't a generic. I mean, I guess we could do time. Okay, let's... Call expression requires function. Huh? <clears throat> Wait, just you format time as a unit variant. You need to write it without the parentheses. Well, no, that's not what I want. Oh, because we need, uh, yeah, so why can't we use this? Am I looking at the wrong version of this crate? Or is it part of a feature that I have not? Yeah, see, because here we have a get value of I-64. <clears throat> so this would work. We just have to figure out where, where we're going wrong here. Format, so base. Hmm. So why is this missing from there? G streamer format. Is a specific am I missing something because this is oh because this is format yeah I'm dumb I'm dumb because this is the name of a type. This is the name of a package. Oh, that still didn't work. So why does theirs work then? Is it just because the, the offset for... Um, Maybe set segment is a different type that it requires. Well, we should be able to say, um, get value, right? Okay. Now let's see if this works. Yeah. 
Now the question is, do I have this right? <clears throat> do we need to set the offset ahead? No, it should be added. It should be added. All right, let's give it a couple minutes to play here. Hey McCann, what's going on? <clears throat> I'm I'm always curious what the uh, the colors are going to end up with when it stops. Trying to get Monday over with. I know that feeling well. I am. I am currently in in the same boat right now. Been a rough one today. Sorry to hear that. Just work stuff or life stuff. We got a little of both going on. Um, we'll leave that open because I might I might borrow that. Oh, uh, hit a deer. Oh, uh, that sucks. Had had that happen a number of times too. Okay, so we are a little bit further. <clears throat> Actually, let's let's make it a little bit more extreme. Let's let's let it run for like I don't know another minute or two, and then we will try to add our video to it and ensure that it doesn't fast forward. Lost my wallet, canceled my credit found. Ah. Oh. And I tell you what, McCann, like, it just, it seems like everything. Uh, I think, like, 2020 can just, like, go right to hell, you know? <laughs> What's going on, Aaron? We're trying to test to see whether uh, we can fix the the fast forward issue that we have. I'm gonna I, I want to exaggerate this a little bit more, so I'm gonna let it run for maybe another 30 seconds, and then we will add our video to it and see whether we fixed our issue. Okay, let's do it. Time to add an input, and now we wait. It's either going to fast forward really fast, not at all. Look at that. So we fixed the issue. Except we do have one more thing we need to do though. <clears throat> We did this for our, we did this for our audio, but we did not do it for our video. So let's, I mean, let's move this up. Um, let's see, we'll, we'll put it up here. Okay, so there's our running time. Where is it? All right, here we go. So now let's take this. Oops, you are fine there. We're gonna do it before the link. Let's do the same thing for here. We should really comment this and say um, offset source pad pad by current. Actually, let's while we're adding comments, we'll. Compile this and let this run. Okay, so offset source pad by current running time so that videos do not fast forward to get in sync with running time of pipeline. Okay. Okay, 
So now we're going to let this run again. <clears throat> and then before you noticed that we had no audio and the reason we didn't have any audio was actually because of setting the offset on the pipelines. So we set an offset on the video. So the video played right when it was supposed to, but we, we didn't on the audio. So the audio basically fast forward to, to the point where we never heard it. <clears throat> it was too dark for me to tell. Really, I couldn't find anything, but it was 4 a.m. and there was a lot of truck traffic, so I was not exploring too far. I was not driving overly fast. Yeah, I mean, it happens. Um, I mean, it's been 18 years now, but <clears throat> my, um, my eldest daughter's mom was coming home from work one night and actually hit polo horses, came up over a hill, and they were right there in the middle of the road. Uh, I often show some diagrams of your code. Um, hold on, let me, let's just test this really quick and then I can answer your question. Okay, so let's see. Now we should have video that is not fast forwarding and we should get our audio, hopefully. Come on. Sweet. What brings you to the manor of the good people? I'm searching for something. Okay, perfect. So let's um uh so Pudgelicious, are you referring to like this type of diagram? Or are you referring to Oops. Let me start this up again. Come on, start. Or are you referring to like this diagram right here? The second one, so this one right here of, of how the pipeline's constructed. So um, this, okay, yeah. So this one is generated from GStreamer itself. So I'm not technically defining these things, but what it is doing when we ask it to output that, do I have an example here? Is um, it's, it's using this dot graph definition so we can basically create directional graphs and stuff like that and apply attributes and things like that. And we can apply styles to them. So it's it generates this. And then we're just using the dot command to convert it to an SVG, you know, whatever dot to whatever dot SVG. And that's basically how that <clears throat> diagram there is being generated is internal. I have an HTTP endpoint that basically tells asks graph is to hand me back the dot data about the current running pipeline. And then I call out to the dot command on the console and get it to generate SVG data, which then I just push through the browser. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Graphis is really, really awesome. Okay, so uh, this is ticket number 35. So let's commit it. Um, wait, what do we change in output? Or what do we change in output? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, let's commit that. 
default output should be 30 frames per second. Okay. Now we can add source mixer input, get fixes number, I already forgot it, number 35, number 35. Um, set source pad offset so that newly added videos don't try to sync to running time. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that's closed. We do have some other weird issues though. This one, I don't even know whether I feel like tackling today. That one's gonna be a big deal. Um, adding the ability to change resolution and volume on the output, we could do that. So this is, I had this when it's pulling from RTMP sources. However, it appears that it's also doing it on RTMP out because Let's let's comment this out really quick, and we'll just use an auto output, which will play locally, and we'll see whether we get the same issue. shift that there we go okay so now we just have our blank pipeline running here let's go and add an input to it okay yeah so it's definitely something with our rtmp pipelines right because <clears throat> this is perfect This is perfect. So our, our main issue is pulling and pushing from RTMP. So we definitely have some issues here. All right, how's everybody feel today? Should we, one, just try to do some basic Rust stuff where we do some code cleanup and <clears throat> tests and, and better error handling, or do we want to uh, watch me bang my head against the desk for a couple of hours trying to debug harder problems? Okay. <clears throat> I'm still not sure why this is the case. <laughs> Either is fine for me. <laughs> I've, it's really interesting to me because there'll be days where, you know, I spend my entire stream just fighting, trying to figure stuff out and never make any progress. And then I get to the end of it and I'm like, I have no idea why anybody hung out for any of that. <laughs> it's just like, I, I'm grateful to have company through all of it. You came here for RTMP? Yeah, and I'm happy. I know that there's some people coming in and out of here. I'm absolutely happy to explain anything that I know about RTMP or video. You know, I'm, I'm not an expert. I know a little. I'm... I'm a journeyman. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh... Is 
Yeah, I find this stuff really fascinating. And one of the things I'm like really looking forward to is, you know, the knowledge that I'll have by the end of this. That's sort of the fun thing about taking on projects like this is they can be insanely frustrating sometimes. But it's really cool at the end of it when you get to step back and see everything you learn. Wait. Um. Oh, because I had HTTP. RTMP. You're here for Eric. <laughs> Someone find you interesting, sir. It appears we have a new follower. I'm just here to watch you code. Well, sometimes it's not code, sometimes it's just debugging. That's all right, I, I misspell everything. Catacy, thanks so much for the follow. What brings you to the land? Okay, so I don't understand this. Why are we not getting any data here? We hear the audio, but we're not seeing the video. And I don't understand why. All right. I want to try something really quick. I have a laptop next to me. I have a Windows computer over here too, but then I'm not near the microphone. So I'm going to open up VLC on here and see whether or not I can get it to work. So let's see, open network stream. Okay. So, I mean, we could try to push something else to here, uh, which might be another option that would allow us to de that would allow us to debug whether or not it's our issue. So um, I guess let's add, we're gonna need to remove the input first. Delete input. Okay. Oh. Add the input back. Uh, the gash, look at debug console for a VLC. Interesting. I don't see it over here on my laptop either. Okay, so let's try something really quick. Dangerous quest for unknown mountain. All right, let's see. I'm going to log in over here and I'm just going to I'm going to just try and push Big Buck Bunny to this RTMP endpoint. And then we'll try and watch that in VLC. And then we'll be able to tell whether it's like either a VLC issue or it could potentially just be this, maybe it doesn't have enough resources here. Yeah, because I have this running in just like a container with very little CPU or anything. Hold on, bear with me two seconds. It looks like I did not save that command or something.
Yeah, that's the command I want. Okay. Okay. Now I think we have Big Buck Bunny. Let's just, I wanna just try this out real quick and. This should rule out our streamer. Hmm. Okay, so then it's clearly something with our... Hmm. Kyle 555, hi, how you doing? Oh, there's new updates to Rust Analyzer? Okay, so we clearly have something going on here. Because we are pushing, we are pushing video from over here instead of our streamer. So what else can we do to troubleshoot which thing is our issue? Well, no, because it wouldn't, the issue wouldn't be our Nginx setup because, okay, yeah, so there's definitely something. Let's see if we can see what this was. Okay, so we had MPEG-2 transport stream with AAC audio <clears throat> and HD64 high profile. So it seems like most of our issue has to do with our color profile, right? Does that seem right? Because if we do it off of... Uh, back up. This may not be there. Yeah, okay, so we need to run the pipeline for just a second. So that clearly worked with high. We notice here. So where is our pipeline? Alright, let's open this. Uh, what happened with Rust Analyzer? New features when completing function calls, automatically insert and. Okay, so let's look at our pipeline here. What I am interested in here is after the video mixer. Okay, so we're coming out here. 
We're still RGBA. Okay, so it looks like on the other side of the video convert, right, is where we're sw switching to 444. <clears throat> so. Okay, so that's. Wanda Bull, thanks so much for the raid. How was your stream? Okay, so here's where our profile is getting set. And I wonder whether that's something to do with our caps filter here. How was your stream? What were you working on? Okay, so I think this is our issue here. Somehow our format is getting set to Y444. Made some progress, not quite <laughs> what I was hoping for. I feel like that's every single day for me. <laughs> what were you working on? Uh, let's go to our output and let's look here. So where's our caps filter? So this is what we have going on the outside. So I don't know how our format is getting set. Um, Someone find you interesting, let's see. Sir. It appears Just to inspect X264 encoder. Ben's 1000, thanks so much for the follow. Wait, GST inspect. Let's go see what our caps are here. Ah, uh, wait, was this before or after? Okay, this is coming into our encoder. So we need to make sure that our encoder supports whatever format that we're sending it. <clears throat> so we had I-420, right? Profile high 444, high main. Okay, so Can we say profile? All right, can we say profile? Just high. I'm looking for a new database host and rebuilding my local dev environment. What database are you using? All right, let's refresh this and see what's going on. <clears throat> All right, so we're still, we have a profile set to high, which is good. However, No, nope, we're still coming out this side. Hmm. Okay. So. I want to set the format to I-420. <clears throat> and I, I kind of really want to set a constant bit rate on this too. But how do we keep ending up in four four four? So I think we have our mixers set to There's RGBA, RGBA. Yeah, so we just have it set to RGBA. I thought we set it to 420 though. Hmm. Let's try it. Format. Oh. 
I swore we had this set to I-420. <clears throat> uh, Postgres on Heroku. I'm 80% to the row limit of current plan. Next one is $50 a month. <clears throat> uh, so we are working on an RTMP switcher. So what we're trying to do is create a program that allows us to have multiple streamers push their streams somewhere. And then the switcher can basically treat them as cameras and switch between them and push them to one or more outputs, um, as well as like layer in videos, do picture in picture, use scheduler, use a scheduler to kind of determine that, you know, at like 1 p.m. push streamer one out to Twitch at 2 p.m., you know, push streamer two. Unfortunately, McCann, it is not uh, Tuesday yet. Okay, so we're playing here. Let's go look at our pipeline again. What are we at? Profile high. Did we get it? Okay, that, that might work. Okay. So now let's add our input here and make sure it works. Uh, this one is going to be backup. Whoa. I'm searching for someone. All right, that was our issue. We got it. Now oh, we have some like tearing here. Now the question is, is that just my video card here? Or is that the... The video that's coming in. <clears throat> Look at that, we fixed like two issues today. Okay, um, so let's remove that really quick. Um, we're gonna remove this input really quick and then we're gonna put it back. And then I just want to watch it here because I want to see whether that tearing was like my screen uh, was just like my video card. Tea over coffee. Good morning. Are you dealing with getting the options through the pipeline correctly? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, so we do have some jitter in there. So we're gonna have to figure that out. Hmm. Yeah, and there's like, there's definitely some tearing and stuff going on here. Hmm. Okay, so we, we figured some stuff out, but we still have some other issues. It's going backwards. Yeah, yeah, so that's the thing that I've noticed. I, I feel like there's maybe like a buffer that has a few frames in it, and then somehow our like presentation timestamps or something get jacked up, and then it goes back and replays a couple of frames. I, that seems to be what's happening. I'm not entirely sure why, why it's happening yet, <clears throat> but that's kind of what it looks like. <clears throat> so now I'm curious if our inter-source stuff is still going to be broken after this. So let's let's try that. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's just general bug stomping, Wandable. Um, we're trying to understand a little bit about uh, the internals of GStreamer and kind of what might be going on. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you're just agreeing with me, Rocker Brew. That's that. That's what it seems looks like. So let's let's just add this really quick here. And now I want to see something. Um, enforce encoder preset and color and 
color format. So this, this did fix the issue, at least with VLC not being able to play it. Okay, so I wonder whether maybe VLC is just incapable of playing 444. That would seem odd. All right, so let's uh, let's check out uh, InterSource and let's try and merge in uh, Master. Okay. Wait a second. Wait, did we accidentally delete that? All right. Okay, um, so now I, I just want to run this really quick and see whether we still have our issue. I mean, likely when we add this, I'm going to make it like a configuration property because we'll probably have to start like managing configs for individual um, inputs and output types and you know, we'll set these as configuration properties, but for now, <clears throat> we'll just hard code these. Okay. So. There we go. Whoa. What is this? Why is there 24 hours on there? What is that? I am so confused right now. Main. All right, that's going to back up. Let's change it to um, the other one really quick. I think I just heard thunder. This should be interesting. I'm waiting for my voice to get used to talking all of the time. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna come here. If this jumps up to 24 hours, then we've got some weird thing. No, okay. Yeah, we got something going on there. All right, let's add this input here. Okay, yeah, so there, there's still <clears throat> whatever this issue is when we move to like the inter sources. And it's probably like missing keyframes or something. But let's just go back to master. We're gonna, we're gonna leave this one alone for now. <laughs> okay, so I kind of want to figure out what this like weird jitter issue is. Hmm. 
What else did we have to figure out here it's in the way of issues? <clears throat> I know we, we have a lot of cleanup that we need to do and uh, error handling of unwraps and stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, we did have this issue of like when we consume RTMP too. And so this is not... Let's test this really quick because we also have the <clears throat> part of this issue exists just solely in pushing to RTMP. And I mean, we, we could turn on like verbose debugging while we're doing this, but Um, let's let's try this really quick. Um, so we're gonna output to backup, and let's pull from. Okay. Okay, so we are gonna push a video from this machine to this RTMP endpoint, and we are going to have this read it in, in as an input, mix it together, and send it back out to another one. Um, yeah. Because now I'm trying to remember what all of these issues are. And then we still have to figure out, there was another issue where if we tried to play it locally here on screen that it basically locked up. And I'm curious whether that just happens to be like a buffer that's not big enough or something. Come on. Okay. So we should be able to see this is the original, which seems to be working just fine. <clears throat> now here's ours that's reading from that one. Hmm. It's working. I mean, aside from this weird. So we have sound now. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's update this ticket then. Because then. Uh, where is it? Because now we know this actually is not. Um, let's edit this because now we know that this is always we no longer have missing sound Jitter in video um, I'm pushing to um, RTMP So now this could also be just the fact of this may be just my computer not keeping up potentially because remember right now i also have a lot of like screen capture stuff going on i have my own um i have my own encoder going to send out to twitch i feel like we don't have a lot of issues with this so let's just Three, two, 
So, I mean, we have some headroom for a CPU. But, I mean, we could try to maybe change the preset that we have our output set at. Um, oh, we also don't have the speed preset set either. But I mean, we could try to set it to like main or baseline. <clears throat> but no, because the jitter is like, it's not. I don't know. I mean. Let's change this. Let's also change our key interval. Let's remove that. And let's also... I also want to play with the speed preset. Could running the Rust code in release mode not help? <clears throat> um, Lankless, um, I guess so. Is there a bunch of instrumentation that's happening in debug mode that would cause an issue? Anarchy Orchestra, I just tuned in and already this is making my head explode. Uh, what, what, what's making your head explode? I, I am happy, you know, I will clarify that I am hobbyist level at this stuff. I've, I have some experience here, but I'm by no means an expert, so I'm learning... I'm learning quite a bit uh, on the fly as well, but I am happy to share with you anything that I know already and how some of this stuff works. I'm happy to take a two minute break and walk through like exactly how um, video works. Oh, the interface where you're at, where you're monitoring, that's just HTOP. That's just a, a program on uh, Linux. Okay, so our pipeline is now paused. Oh, because there's nothing coming in. Okay, so... Okay, there we go. So I just started pushing video. Now we're in a playing state. So let's... Let's try this now. Oh no, I'm happy to. I, I wanna I wanna get as many people educated on this stuff as possible. I think it, this stuff is really fascinating and you know, having more people. Okay, yeah, so we still have this weird sort of frame replay issue. Yeah, the more I look at that, it it does look like it's And it almost looks like it's isolated to sections. So it, it may not actually be like keyframes. But yeah, there's almost like this, right? Either we're missing some, well, I think we're missing some frames. There's a bunch of drop frames. Hmm. But yeah, there's like that weird kind of stutter going on there. I feel like there's buffers that are sort of replaying. <clears throat> Your debug. Okay, so um, what do we do? 
cargo build. Is it release? <clears throat> Sven, thanks so much for the follow. <coughs> It's worth a shot. We'll compile for release mode. I mean, eventually we're going to get to, um, I want to use the hardware encoders for this. So eventually we'll, we'll swap up our pipeline rather than using this X264 encode. We'll use like, um, the VAPI or Invenc one so that we can use, take advantage of a GPU. You do not need to be mutable. Oh, okay, so there's a cargo run version of it too. Can I just do that here? Seems like compilation of release takes a bit longer. That's playing. I mean, it definitely doesn't, it feels like it's not as bad, but it's definitely. But yeah, there's definitely sort of a weird issue there. I mean, we have data flowing, right? So <clears throat> we're getting closer and closer, but yeah, we, we definitely have some sort of issue with this. So let's look at our pipeline. Now we know though, because if we come back into our main here, right? And let's remove this from here. And we'll just play it out to the screen down here. Meh. Oh. Mismatch closing delimiter. Where? Huh? What did I miss? Oh, duh. Because this is, there we go. All right. So let's play this really quick. Oh wait, I think we had another bug here though. Cause I think it locks up when we play from RTMP as an input. We'll find out. All 
Okay, so we're paused. Let's get some video going. And we should pop, watch us jump into a playing state. Oh, it's not. It's working. I mean, I do see like some weird kind of tearing here, right? Okay, so whatever our issue is, is definitely in our output pipeline. Yep, so that's definitely smooth. Okay, so let's go check out our issues because I did have an issue here for locking up when we were pulling from RTMP, but that's not true. Um, right here, the auto freezes when consuming RTMP, but that's not true. We must have accidentally fixed it somewhere along the line. We'll reopen it later. Uh, so no, we didn't fix it. That is... Uh, so I didn't generate the pipeline here. So basically, <clears throat> everything leading up to here, the audio mixer and the video mixer, everything this direction of that um, should be fine, right? Because we only notice this weird jittering issue when coming out the other side of these T's here. Audio doesn't seem to be a problem, but it does seem to be an issue here. So we need to figure out kind of like what, what is so different here. And I think that the auto outputs, um, let's, I'm going to save this here really quick. And then let's, start this up really quick and then we'll generate we'll generate the same SVG for the one that works for the auto sync oh weird all oh, right because it's jumping into a random spot okay so now if we do this okay so now we can find all the way here on the other side of these T's we just have like this auto audio sync. But it takes in X raw data itself. What does the video? Okay, so this takes in video X raw data. And it's got a different format, but. So yeah, I mean, we have a different color format, but that that shouldn't be our issue. And we're sending it through a video rate, but same thing, none of our stuff changed. Let's um Let's XD, XDG open, downloads, debug. Ah. All right, that's not what I wanted. Okay. So let's try to figure out what's going on here. So we've got a queue coming out the other side, which it should as well, right? That's sort of like the thing you want to do. Uh, I was reading somewhere anytime that we fan out that we want a queue on that side and same thing going in, which is fine. We, we have queues for each. Then we go into a convert, right? And 
And I mean, we have a different color format, but I, I don't think that this is going to be an issue. I mean, unless it's just like, It's just our caps filter. So, and we know it's not the, on the server end because we can clearly push from here directly to this endpoint and not have any of those issues, right? So, and we can pull from this endpoint and there not be really, I mean, there's a couple of issues, but not the same ones. So our issue is without a doubt, our output to the RTMP sync. Zeoc, yeah, me too. These are like ridiculously helpful <clears throat> for trying to debug what's going on as well as just kind of like conceptualizing how data is flowing through your pipeline. Staring at code is one thing. Looking at it and being able to follow a graph is a whole new world. Okay, so... Hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, we can try and Google this, right? Let's see. Um, the other thing we could do is we could try to send the FLV container out into like a file sync. Right? So we should be able to like GST inspect file sync. So we could in theory be able to push that FLV container to disk and we could try it from there. Um, let's see. GStreamer RTMP repeat frames. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the difficulty is that I, I don't know enough about being able to debug this to be able to like look at the actual frame data and timestamps to figure out like, are we replaying things? Or is this just something to do with like P frames and B frames? Oh, let's see, um, G streamer video jitter. I mean, we could we could debug this and try to look for like buffer <clears throat> underruns and stuff, but um, let's see. Could it be our clock? Oh, sounds aren't working. 
Where are you? All right, there we go. Sound should work now. Catastrophic failure detected. Evacuation protocol has been initiated. Abandon ship. SOS. Abandon ship. <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, today's like just a. It feels like a really slow day, doesn't it? Okay. Um. JT, how's it going? Yeah, let's, I don't know, let's, let's run this and let's, uh, let's just set our debug level up. This may be entirely too busy. Uh, what do we? Let's just look at the encoder and see what happens. Oh, wait a second. <clears throat> Wrong one, because we're still using Trying to distract yourself from the fires burning eight miles away. Ah, oh, Ziok, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. Well, stay safe. So all of this, <clears throat> like, I wonder if this has anything to do with it, right? Like, I don't understand why we're receiving those errors. Um, G streamer got backward DTS. So for anybody who doesn't know what DTS is, <clears throat> is there are two separate timestamps when we talk about video. <clears throat> so you have the individual frames, right? And so you have an iframe. An iframe is exactly what you would picture it. It is a full image of what's on the screen. Now, you also have B frames and P frames, with, which basically use frames uh, using in, interprediction and intraprediction. So that's using basically frames that came before or after it in order to be able to, to, um, to be able to pass basically deltas of frames along. So when it's compressed in the codec, those may get reordered to make it more efficient for the decoder. So you have the presentation timestamp, and that is the order in which the player would see these frames. And then you have the DTS, which is the decode timestamp, which is the order in which these frames are decoded at the decoder, if that makes sense. So what this is warning about is it's basically saying like, hey, we're, we're, pulling, we're pulling the data out of the buffers that has a decode timestamp that's like in the past like from i'm guessing it's saying that hey we've already decoded one that's uh that comes after this which would fall in line with what we're seeing right if it's constantly getting buffer data 
that's old, then that would create the very issue that we have. I'm just not entirely sure why it's happening. And this could just be our own clock too, right? So here's, <clears throat> here's the biggest problem too when we start getting into um, trying to align timestamps and things like that is when you sleep on a system, there's no guarantee that the computer sleeps for 100 milliseconds, right? It could be 100 milliseconds. It could be 500 milliseconds. It could be 20 minutes. Uh, the system only guarantees that it will sleep for at least 100 milliseconds, right? So you often end up with these things where you sort of lose time because of timers like that. So you often need to actually count CPU ticks to ensure you know exactly how much time has really passed since the last time you were invoked. So it's possible that some of this just has to do there, but... Uh, while running below GStreamer pipeline command, I keep on getting ignoring DTS going backward, facing tough time to fix these issues. I love it. Unanswered. Of course it's unanswered. Um, currently inconsistent through GStreamer, making it impossible in some situations to mux proper streams. Uh, this is like seven years old. Uh, so you have a sequence of iframe, p frame, b frame, p frame, p frame. Okay, so here's like a, a, an exact example, right? So this is this is saying basically the ordering of of frames. So we have an iframe, then a p frame, then a b frame, then a p frame, then another p frame. So the presentation timestamps would actually be in this order, right? There's zero, but one is back here, then two, and three is here, four is here, right? So the decode timestamps, because this is the order that they actually appear, would be this, right? Uh, so the B frame in the middle has a presentation timestamp of one, but needs two frames decoded before it can be displayed. Thus, they need to have DTS negative one. Okay, so X264 encoder is currently doing this. It offsets the, the decode timestamp so that it never it is never negative. It matches PTS on keyframes, but this means it produces DTS greater than PTS. What is worse, it is th throwing away information. The exact DTS. Hmm. All right, so it looks like we don't really have a lot of... We don't have a lot of options here. Hmm. I don't even know which queue we're using right now. I want to say I saw somewhere to use Q2. So our FLV Q is a Q normal. I can't remember what the difference between these were. I mean, it's quite possible that maybe a multi queue is a better, but I need to understand better, like <clears throat> when these things are appropriate versus not appropriate. Buffer's not getting drained slash flushed properly. Yeah, I mean, that's possible too. Um, I know that there's a debug command to look for buffers. Let, let's run this really quick and then we will we'll go look that up too. Because there's a there's something here. I, th I think it might just be buffers equals where we can get the logs of just the buffers to see whether we're getting like buffer underruns. 
Let's try this really quick. Buffers. Yeah, I don't want to see this though. Because I mean, I'm not seeing anything else. Uh, let's go look at it, the, the GST debug. Uh, G streamer, G streamer, GST debug. Okay, so two is warnings. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's let's put everything else to one. And I thought it was buffers. No. I swear there was like a category in here for just seeing buffers. All right, so let's just do a queue then. So we're gonna say um, Q2. Okay, that is not working the way I... Right? Oh, it's colon. That's why. Okay. Okay, so that may be entirely too much information. Let's back that up a little. Check out our encoder. We're just exploring today. See what we can learn from doing this. Uh, let's see. Why are you paused? Why does the video not connect? Now that's interesting. Uh, that's not VS Code. This is um, NeoVim with uh, Airline Vim, which is why you kind of see it looking pretty here. <clears throat> so this is interesting. So it goes into the playing state here. But if we turn on debugging for it, then it does not. Uh, there we go. 77 frames latency. Wow. There's two and a half second latency in our pipeline.
Hmm. Okay. Let's up it. Let's go up to five. Ah, uh, yes. Airline.vim. Okay. So this is just telling us it's outputting our keyframes. <clears throat> So I don't see anything here that's giving us our issue. So I feel like it's still a buffer issue. Let me, I'll give you a link. It's a uh, source, right? Airline dot vent. There you go. Okay, so that's not... So what am I missing here? I don't think it's the FLV Mux. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we do have some cues. RTMP input, audio cue. These are on the inputs. I mean, so we have some instances of the cues getting full. I mean, I don't know whether making the queue is larger, it's gonna fix that. So we've got. Hmm. So we also have some instances where the queue's empty. I wonder if we need to just increase the sizes of these queues. <clears throat> so, um, can the two sets of latency be the queues are backing up? I mean, it, it could just be the amount of time it takes to process the pipeline too. Remember the entirety of the pipeline is fetching data over the network, decoding it, doing a bunch of stuff, stacking it together, and then sending it back through to be re-encoded. I mean, at the end of the day, two seconds of latency probably is not a lot considering what we're doing. <clears throat> so, um, I wonder, let's see, um, let's see, GNC, let's look at our queue. I mean, we could. I mean, this is really, really bad practice, but we could. We could, in theory, just change all of our buffer sizes to be basically indefinitely large. Yeah, no, this isn't local right now. We're just sort of testing some things. Um, so we could. Where's our queue going into our converter? Oh, we didn't convert that one. Let's just get crazy here. Um, let's set our 
Mars max. Let's set max size buffers equal to um, zero. Oh no, it wants a double, right? Um, no, it's an unsigned integer. Uh, that's like a U64. All right, to a U64. How long have you been working with video programming stuff? Um, <clears throat> not long. I spent um, two years working at uh, Comcast on video multiplexing stuff, um, but I didn't do a ton of work on the internal stuff that did the multiplexing. So I was exposed to this world through um, building all of the infrastructure and failover like the distributed system that scheduled all of the, the multiplexers and things like that to run and uh, working on the ad insertion logic for this stuff. I mostly focused on like the dash side of things, MPEG dash, uh, which is like HLS. So that was my first foray into video at all. And um, I haven't done this in a couple of years. So, you know, I, being in this space, I kind of learned a little bit about it, but I'm by no means an expert on it. <clears throat> uh, hey, Eric, if you don't want the column jitter when a new error warning comes in, you can say set sign column. Um, bees for knees, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, max size, we're gonna set all of these to disabled. We really don't want to do this, <laughs> but I'm just curious now, like if we put like a giant buffer <clears throat> in front of our pipeline that runs to the encoder, does that help resolve our issue? But yeah, Zioc, I'm still very much learning this. And I'm actually really excited about this project because I get to dive in a little deeper than I did, you know, the last time I worked on video stuff. And <clears throat> I'd love to get to a point where <coughs> I know even more about it, where maybe for fun we could sit down and try to write our own encoder or decoder. It would be highly inefficient, but... Uh, when a warning W appears on the left side, add a column to Vim. Alright, I'm just going to do a cargo run here. <clears throat> yeah, Zioc, me too. I, I love super low level stuff. I absolutely love working on projects that like feel like I just got kicked in the deep end and I have to figure out how to swim. It often makes me feel like a complete idiot for a long time, but I love coming out the other side learning a ton. Okay, why are we failing now? <clears throat> Okay, so these need to be, is it just the one? Uh, max size buffers. All right, so I think this needs to be 32. Oh, I was looking at it unsigned, unsigned. Sudo, how you doing? What do we break now? Max size, time, time.
Okay. Come on. Work. No. Um... Uh, so a couple of max size time requires a UN64. Okay. They're just all mix, mix match. Okay. Okay, so we're in pause. Let's push some video. <clears throat> Okay. I am not hopeful this is going to fix our issue, but it's worth a shot. Yeah. So we still have some sort of weird... Yeah, it's like... Okay, so let's kill this. And now let's add the same crazy buffer size to also be in front of here because if it's not if it's if adding bigger Q size to this you does not help you have a new then if this doesn't help then we've got some other issue we don't want to leave this here anyway I'm just sort of Right now we're kind of doing like the poking and prodding from different en angles and then watching what happens and seeing whether we can make some observations and assumptions about what's going on. Sudu, thanks so much for the follow. Is there a chance you are doubling the stream or something? Um, I don't think so, no. Looks like you are de-interlacing in the field field's order is wrong um that's uh you rock that's also a possibility let's let's check it out okay so we're just gonna play this really quick Okay. No. For a second there, I thought thought it might have been fixed. <clears throat> okay, so bigger buffer. Hmm. Okay. So let's look at our pipeline. And we can actually see you, Rock. Um, frame rate should be okay, though, you rock, because one thing that we, we can see, though, is if we don't send it out RTMP somewhere, we just play it in a local player, we don't have this issue. Our issue is only on the RTMP side of our pipeline. I see your name frequently in Begin's channel. A friend of his is a friend of mine. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I've been hanging out in Begin's channel for, for quite some time. Trying to play 24 frames at... Uh, so we have a video rate portion of our pipeline. So let's look. Video rate. So this portion of our pipeline... Will... will allows us to convert between the two. So if we tried to play it at 30 frames per second, it would just um, duplicate some frames, I guess, for us. But 
the odd thing about it is it doesn't feel like it's laggy, right? It almost feels like we're watching it replay some frames, right? And if we look at, um, let's just, so here's what we're consuming, right? So we could do a GST discover on this, right? Um, HLS stream key dot M3 U8, so, oops. So here's what we're consuming. If we look at this, it's being consumed at 30 frames per second. And if we were watching it, um, and if we pull up the one that we were just playing, we can see this is also 30 frames per second, right? And if we pulled up the original here, so this is the original. So we can see it's just fine. <clears throat> and if we pushed it to like a video here locally, it would play fine as well with a little bit of tearing. But our issue is here. So it's on our RTMP out. And we get the same issue no matter what we're doing. So there's something in our RTMP pipeline that's kind of all out of whack. So, so it's saying it's progressive though. I don't know what AVC and AU are though. I have the feeling I'm just trying to see whether we can picture what's going on here. Yeah, do you see you see that for a second there? Yeah, it's progressive in. Because if we look at this video, this is what we're consuming. And this is also progressive. All right. Oops. Um Uh, this one. I guess this isn't going to... We need more info. Alright, so 30 frame rate... Four two zero. Okay, yeah, so it's not interlaced. <clears throat> so what about where we are sending it? So same thing, 420. Um, 
I don't even know what that is. But yeah, also not interlaced. Hmm. Have you seen that there's 24 frames on AVC pan and 30 frames per second on the next nodes pan? Um, the gash, I'm not sure what you're talking about. There's 24 frames on AVC pan and 30 frames per second on the next nodes pan. Are you talking about in the pipeline? I don't think I noticed they should all be 20 or they should all be 30 frames per second, right? Because we can follow this in, right? In the end of the pipeline, okay. All right, so we've got 30 here, right? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. I'm not seeing where there's 24. Which component did you see the 24 frames per second on? Do you see which component the gash? Because everywhere I'm, I'm looking, I see around Q2 here. Frame rate is 30. Frame rate is 30. Am I am I missing something? Uh, try and find in clip. Oh, was there was there a time where that wasn't that they that they didn't match? Because I mean, these should be. I mean, it's quite possible that. I don't know, I mean, it's possible that it's like that before we start playing the video. And then there's like maybe like a new nego caps negotiation. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what you're you were thinking of is color depth. Yeah, so this is all, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is all progressive. But yeah, that's the, that's the sort of the oddest thing about it 
is there's definitely something in this end because if we come into our main and then let's not send it to the RTMP pipeline that I created. We're just gonna set it, send it to an auto audio and auto video sync. Oh no worries, the guys. Like I'm, I'm happy. Like I, I love having more eyes to look at things and catch things I don't see. But yeah, so if, if we load it here, you'll see we don't have any of those like jittering issues. I mean, we have some like kind of tearing issues here, which is likely my graphics card. But if we go look at this, right, we can see it's the same thing. The, I mean, the, the color format is different. I'll give you that. But same resolution, same frame rate, same cues. Well, no, I think these are regular cues, but you know. But we have the caps filter there. You know, we've got this whole video rate stuff going on. Someone finds you interesting. So. It appears we have a new follower. Frodio, thanks so much for the follow. So, but basically all of this is the same. This whole front part of the pipeline is the same all the way up until here, right? This is where we start pushing it through the encoder and all of that. So it it's definitely something to do with the encoder or something. Um, I don't, let's see if we can change this out. Um, grep, uh, can we use, a different encoder here and see whether that works. AV Inc. I mean, we could try this one. And I mean, we could try the NVENC, right? NVH264 Inc. I don't know, let's try it. Um, at this point, I will try anything. So we realize it's not, we realize it's not all of these buffers. So let's get rid of all of that. You all go away. Okay. So let's see if we can get the NVENC in here. <clears throat> uh, where are you? Where are you? X264. Okay. What I say was, it is NVH264 encode. NVH264 inc. Okay, so we're gonna try and use the hardware encoder and see what happens. Oops, cargo run. So what do we figure out can't really break it? Uh, we're still trying to troubleshoot what the issue is. <clears throat> we did figure out that I don't think it's the buffers because we created a bigger buffer. Although maybe, I don't know. Okay. Oh wow, that looks way better now. Okay, so this is using the NVIDIA. So, Let's let's send it out to RTMP and see what happens. Oh wait 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 wait! Of course, NVENC doesn't work there. I'm, I'm like, oh, this is way better because that's not RTMP. <laughs> now we're gonna try and send RTMP out to a hardware encoder. Yeah, but yeah, you rock. You see what I mean though? Everything in the pipeline all the way from fetching the data and everything 
and layering it. Um, all of it works, seems to work without any problem when we play it locally, which takes in X raw buffers. So it's somewhere in the taking that and converting it to either, it's either the encoder or the FLV mux or sending it to RTMP, but somewhere in all of that is where things are kind of going wrong. Oh, that's just for the X264. Okay. So let's see if we can get the hardware encoder working. <clears throat> I have not tried to use this yet, so there's no guarantees we can get this working either. Fail to link elements. Why? Okay, so we have some sort of like negotiation issue then. Why? Oh yeah, because we're we're not gonna leave this here. This is just um this is just what we're gonna name it inside of our pipeline if we want to ask the pipeline for it back. So we only care about this, which is uh, for the factory to know <clears throat> which type we want, because we're not we're not going to leave this here. I just want to try this out. So we have some sort of issue with our pipeline. Then um, let's look at our caps: GST, inspect, NVH. 264 encode. 264 encode. So it brings in X raw and it should be able to take an I 420, right? Which is what we had on our right. So yeah, so we should be able to bring in I 420 into here. So let's GST debug equals one, and then we're going to pass it NVH264 inc five. Wait, what am I doing? Oops, <laughs> let's try this again. GST debug equals one uh, NVH264 encoder. Five. It's somewhere in the negotiations. That's usually what happens when it fails to link things is all right, so it says it's supported. This is when it's trying to shut down. Why are we failing to link elements? this for <clears throat> NVH264 ink because somewhere in here is going to be where we failed to link right Alright, 
oh, oh, okay. So here we go. Pad peer query failed. Okay. These logs are like so ver ver verbose, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> okay. So here's where it's obviously trying to set up CUDA, which is fine. Failed to open Wayland display connection. Interesting. So where's our failed connection? Okay, so here we go. So trying to link element RTMP FLV to element RTMP FLV MUX. Okay, so where's RTMP FLV? <clears throat> Uh, now I lost it. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> so it's our Q. So somehow our Q is not able to link. I forgot I need to change this back. Okay, so for whatever reason, we can't link this queue to the mux. Why? That's odd. I've got two graphics cards in here though too. <clears throat> so in theory, one of them should be available. Wait, is that working now? No, we crashed. Fail to link. Um, yeah, grep did not work there. All right, so here's our cube, creating the mux, okay. All right, I think we need, we need to spit these logs out and grep them. I know that there's a tool too for doing this. Um, <clears throat> what is the name of it? It's like GST log viewer or something. Lempi, thanks so much for the raid. Doing well, we're just trying to debug some issues. Okay, so yeah, so a part of it is not visible just because what you are actually looking at for my screen right here is not my entire screen. There's a whole section of my monitor over here, which is where chat is at. So 
<coughs> so when I full screen, you won't fully see that. So you see kind of the same thing here, right? You see that drop out because it actually goes over here. Most of the time, that's not an issue. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. What were we doing? Oh, there's like a GST log, you know, viewer. It's like GST log viewer. That's it. Let's install this. Can't stay, have a headache. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, I hope you feel better. Okay, so let's, let's install this. All right, how do we install you? Install. No, we already have graph is. Yeah, we, I mean, we definitely needed a better tool for this. GST debug, you, no. All right, so this is how to use it. Here we go, installation, that's what I want. So this is all right. This is dev tools. All right. No work to do. What did I miss? GST 1.17 and newer. And we ran that. Wait, what? What am I missing? What am I missing? I don't even know how old this debug viewer is either, so it's quite possible that it, you know. Ninja minus C. Oh. Wait, no, we need to be up here, right? Yeah. Did I miss something with Mason?
So there's no build targets. Why? <clears throat> okay, hot dock. Okay, um, what is this? What is all this? What else are we missing? Pseudo pack. Pseudo pack man. Hot dock. Okay. Uh, of course. Whenever you want something, it always has to be something. It's always something. Dr. Dumenberg, how's it going? Um, I am attempting to slay, but I'm, I'm fairly certain I am getting slayed at this point. I was hoping that this debug viewer program would work. But it looks like I'm going to have some bigger issues to figure out how to get hot dock installed so that I can. All right, so let's just um, let's just run this. Wow, we did a lot. All right, so we're just gonna, um, oops, I was good as two and one. And then, um, I don't know, T that out to logs.log. And then we'll just wait for this to crash and then we'll, we'll open it. <clears throat> uh, your day started that way somehow. It's turning around. I don't know how magic. Anyway, I'll send good vibes your way if that means anything. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of accepting today is just a lot of poking and prodding and seeing what we learn in the process. Okay. So let's... Uh, uh, we need to turn off color because... <laughs> yeah, no. No. All right. Um, where's our... There we go. Um, you almost have the... Oh, uh, what is that for? Is that is that for pair programming? I'm down. I can't even remember what they are. Yeah. Yeah, pair programming. I'm down. Alright, so how do we get the color out out of here? Really? We don't have a way of stripping the color out of here? That can't be right. G streamer debug uh, logs color. I really don't want to have to write like scripts to like strip that stuff out. Oh, here we go. 
That works. GST debug file equals dot slash logs dot log. Okay. Yeah, I suppose that's true too. I could change my term to something. <clears throat> oh. Okay, and we crashed. All right, what am I missing? What am I missing here? Why would the debug file, that, that can't be right. Like why would the debug file That is dumb. Why would the debug file have that in there? Oh, well, I mean, we can still search it. So, uh, failed to link. Um. Yeah. Why is that not in there? Failed to link. How is that the error that is returned? RTMP FLV. <clears throat> All right. I feel like we're gonna have to like write tools for all of this crap. All right, let's try and find. Here's our trying to link RTMP element to FLV mox. Could not find compatible pad to link to RTMP FLV. So RTMP FLV mux is our multiplex. But then RTMP FLV <clears throat> is the Q on that side of it. So the only thing that I can think of here is what's coming out the other side of the encoder. So let's look at our G GSD inspect X264 encoder, right? So on the source side of it, um, we have video X H264. Okay. And that's what's gonna end up flowing into the queue, which we're trying to connect to the FLV mux. So, what does the NVH264 ink look like? So on the source side, we have XH264. So what is the difference here? Is it the stream format? Because right now this is AVC, right? 
and bite stream. Okay, so let's look at our FLV mux then. Uh, GST, because that would mean that the thing that gets negotiated between our encoder and the queue would be this byte stream. But we do know that before we were getting AVC. So let's look at, um, let's look at FLV mux and see what happens. So on its sync pad, yep, okay, so this is our issue, crap. So how do we get around that then? Is there a way to convert from one stream format to another? Okay, let's, let's look. So um, to catch everybody up to speed, the reason we're getting this negotiation issue is coming out this side here, we can see that the stream format that it's using to send data between this X264 encoder and this Q is AVC, right? So that means RTMP, FLV Mux, and this Q are also streaming the data using AVC. However, um, our NVH encoder, you can see here on the source side, only supports byte stream, which means that it's going to force byte stream. So that means that this is going to communicate through byte stream. This is going to communicate through byte stream. And then it's going to go to connect here. And this mux does not support byte stream. So that's why we're getting like a negotiation issue and it just breaks. So we need to somehow figure out how to convert AVC to byte stream. G streamer AVC to byte. There might be an element type that we can use for this. <clears throat> Okay, so here we go. H264 parse. Okay, so let's come into our output here. <clears throat> and where are you? So let's do an uh, H264 parse. Okay, uh, warning, uh, that's probably, it just it not being used. So where's our X264 encoder? Okay, H264 parse, okay. Why are you wearing? Oh. Uh, we need to add it. <clears throat> Struct RTMP. Okay. Okay. Parse. All right. Okay, and we remove it. All right. Oh, I should turn down the debug level here.
Oh, look at that. Look at that. We have an encoder. We have a hardware encoder. Oh, wait a second. Let's push it from the beginning. Is that fixing it? No way. All right, well, I guess we're gonna find out here in a second. Come on. Play. Play. Why is it not working? Uh, what do we have main going to? Uh, we have it pulling from the RTM. Wait, what is that? We have it pulling from one RTMP endpoint and pushing to another. <clears throat> okay. So why is it not pushing there? Oh, and I thought we had it. All right, a minute 36 is where we're at. Come on, load. All right. Ah, <clears throat> oh, so we're missing our video. Oh, no. It's the, is this seriously? It's the CPU. It's the freaking CPU. Look at this. It works. Although we don't have sound now. Why do we not have sound? Oh, we don't have sound in general. Oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, oh, it's the browser's muted. I'm dumb. If rigging works, it works. Yo. So that entire time We've been trying to track this down and it's literally just CPU saturation. All right, so I guess let's, let's leave it. I mean, we might as well just leave this in here, right? Um, let's see, what do we got going on? Diff, source, mixer. What did we do to mod? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll commit that as part of this. Let's make sure we didn't do anything else in here just so we kind of understand what's going on. Um, <clears throat> well, actually here, let's go back. Let's, let's try this one more time. Uh, so we have this at main. Let's set it back to high and see, see what happens. Okay, so that's there. Um, let's remove that. Let's remove that. Let's come in here. 
and change this to NV H264 encode. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, let's let's just find all of these. Percent S uh, X264 encode. Replace that with NVH264 encode. All right, NVH264 encode. Okay. Let's make sure this compiles. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's gonna be the big thing. Uh, what do we have for tickets for the open for that? Maybe that's the better thing that I should have done there. Um, I guess I don't have anything on here. So let's, I guess let's create an issue for that then. So really, I guess I probably should not do that. Let's, let's move this back. Um, let's, we're going to leave this being called X264 encode then. <clears throat> I'm okay with that. Um, so then we just added the parse, right? Okay. So yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll just call it this, and let's add a ticket for that for a feature. We're gonna leave this committed as the nvenc one, just so that I'm not messing with it. But we're gonna add uh, that. So. Um, RTMP, or no, output, output, make uh, encoder and encoder presets configurable. And enhancement. Okay. Okay. Give me two seconds. I'm going to use the restroom real quick. All right, I'm back. So we did that, let's commit this. Source mixer output switch to nvenc encoder. I'm just gonna commit this as is. So I guess uh, maybe uh, I probably will not be on tomorrow, but Wednesday, maybe we can start working on some of that, like configuring the preset, configuring which thing this is, and we can start working on cleaning up this code because I think that that resolves a lot of the weird issues that we had, right? Because yeah, this here should technically be fixed. Um, let me just add a comment. This, try this again on, um, on system without, on its own system to determine if 
it, it was just an issue with CPU load. Okay, I'm just gonna add this here. We're not gonna close it yet because I would like to try it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess maybe tomorrow we can start working or Wednesday we can start working on uh, some of the other like kind of cleaning this stuff up, um, starting to handle errors better with unwraps and things like that, and uh, making our inputs and stuff more configurable. Because at this point, we kind of have uh, a working proof of concept. So I'm not going to start anything new because I've got some family stuff going on tonight. So I need to dip out of here pretty quickly anyway. So it may be a good time to call it quits for the day. So thanks everybody for hanging out. I will be back uh, Wednesday at you know roughly 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And we will tackle some more stuff. So in the interest of time, let's see who, who's... Who's streaming? Oh, it looks like Aaron's on. Let's go crash the party with Aaron. Thanks, everybody. I will see you all on Wednesday.